Welcome back everybody to Desktop Inventions, where I break down the hottest and latest in 3D printing news each week, so you can keep up with the exciting developments in the 3D printing space. So this week we've got some pretty big controversial news for sellers on Etsy. We've got Bamboo Labs releasing their new version 2.1 slicing software, some cool new features. And we've got Z-Step turning eyeglasses waste into 3D printing biodegradable filament. We've got a lot to cover, so let's dive right in. All right, first up, Etsy just quietly updated their creativity standard policies, which has been rocking the 3D printing community this week. So historically, you're able to sell items on Etsy if you fall into one of four main categories. Made by a seller, designed by a seller, handpicked by a seller, or sourced by a seller. And previously, 3D printed objects would fall into the either made by a seller or designed by a seller bucket, with far more things sold on Etsy falling into the made by a seller category. But as you can imagine, in certain categories, looking at you articulated dragons, they have just been flooded and spammed with tons of people selling the same products with the same file, same nut thumbnail, everything. In some cases, people are doing this legitly with proper commercial licenses through Patreon or other means. And in some cases, people are just blatantly ripping off other people's designs and selling them online for a profit. So the new standard on Etsy states, physical items that a seller produced in their personal shop or home using computerized tools such as a laser printer, 3D printer, CNC, or Cricut machine, these items must be produced based on a seller's original design and are often personalized or customized to a buyer's specification. So this means no more printing popular designs from Thingiverse or printables, even if you're giving credit to the originator. If it's not your original design, Etsy considers it ineligible for sale. This move targets resellers who mass print trending models, but it's also sparking backlash amongst hobbyists who want to support designers or share cool prints. This is also going to put some pressure on people with Patreon accounts that are selling their 3D designs online for others to print and sell on Etsy. It's unclear how Etsy is going to enforce this at this point. My guess is the low hanging fruit will be the items that have duplicated thumbnails. Those will be targeted first. Now some people are looking at alternative platforms like Shopify or going fully off Etsy. Let me know in the comments down below, do you think this makes Etsy a better place cleaning up the website or do you think they're overreaching here? Okay, next up, Bamboo Studio just released the version 2.1 update and it's got some real quality of life upgrades. Some of the highlights include copy settings between objects. You can copy specific slicer settings from one object to another, which is super handy for multi-part prints. They've added a precise wall mode, which was pulled from Orca Slicer and enhances dimensional accuracy when that is more important than aesthetics. Also, we have a new infill pattern with the Zag infill pattern, which allows balance between infill percentage and strength. We've got the avoid crossing walls feature, which personally, I think this should be enabled by default. It probably slows down the printing speed a little bit, but it avoids a tool path when possible that could lead to part stringing. So they have the optimized extruder movement during time-lapse. I'm excited to see what this is about, if this really cleans up uh, time-lapses to the next level. I do think Bamboo Labs has some low-hanging fruit that they could clean up with the quality of time-lapses, so I'm excited to see how this one turns out. We've got a new button now with the Sync Printer Information button. I'm thinking this is more useful when you're slicing and sending parts to multiple printers, which have different configurations. We've got better support for TPU multi-model printing and they fixed around 17 different little bugs that have been submitted by the community, so it's great to see them cleaning this up. That's one thing that's really fun about the 3D printing community, is even after you buy your printer, it continues to upgrade itself with software enhancements and just gets better and better over time. There's also a handful of other features I didn't mention, so if you're interested, I put a link to the release notes in the description down below. Next up, Z-Step is trying to take a sustainable approach from eyeglasses to 3D printing. They've created a 3D printer filament made from discarded eyeglass waste. So today I learned that eyeglasses frames are not made from your typical polycarbonate plastics like so many other things. They're often made from an acetate, which is a plant-based plastic. They're made from acetate because it feels more comfortable on your skin, it's more durable, and it's also hypoallergenic. But Z-Step has found with glasses frame manufacturers that up to 80% of the material to make a single frame can be discarded so thousands of tons of material are incinerated or sent to the landfill every year. So one person's trash is another person's biodegradable 3D printing filament. And that's exactly the mindset that Z-Step, an Italian-based 3D printing filament manufacturer, has taken. So the product they sell on their website has a biodegradable rating of over 80%, while compared to PLA, which is normally just 30 to 50% in natural decaying environments. The printer properties appear to be pretty similar to PLA and is being presented as a PLA alternative. 
But to be totally clear, recycling isn't easy. Even though their raw material may be free or they might even get paid to take it, purchasing filament from Z-Step is still going to cost a premium due to the economies of scale and complexity with recycling. This material is coming in at 32 euros for a 750 gram spool or 16 euros for a 250 gram spool. If you're looking for more sustainable 3D printing solutions, this might be right up your alley. And I almost forgot to mention, happy Father's Day. Go print something out there for your fathers. They love a good dad joke. So now we're gonna take a few minutes and catch up on some interesting posts from the 3D printing subreddit. So on Reddit here from 5 Minute Labs, we have a very realistic looking uh, 3D printing simulator that looks like an Ender 3 simulating a print. I'm not sure exactly how this is super useful, if this is meant to be for fun and entertainment, or if this is actually to help with some simulations to help in the debugging process of 3D printing. If you know more about this, let me know in the comments down below. Next up here from Ms141, we have this Halo Energy Sword. This thing looks sick. Miz did a really good job at integrating the LED lights into the translucent material there, and it just looks awesome. Well done, and this is the coolest Halo Energy Sword I've ever seen. This was a build from 2022, and unfortunately, he said he broke it in the same day because the design was really flimsy. Yeah, been there, done that too with my Master Sword 3D print. If you built it once, you can build it again. Next up, we have Prime Tower here, who's just been going ham with the Zotropes. He's posted a few videos in the last couple weeks on his progression on making different types of zoetropes, which are basically mechanical devices that play tricks on your eyes to show moving video or moving animations. And this time he's taken it to the next level where this zoetrope can be visible with the naked eye. Previously you had to have a video camera that was set at a certain frame rate for it to work. But now he's taken his design to the next level. He's got two designs here, one that uses an integrated LED light and one that uses just light from the outside to light up the zoetrope. He's got these posted on Maker World, so I'll be printing these off in the future to see how they work. So that wraps up the 3D printing news this week. It's gonna be a shorter week because I'm working on some big projects in the background. If you found this video helpful, consider hitting subscribe and supporting the channel on Patreon, where I share the behind the scenes builds, exclusive model drops, and sneak peeks to upcoming videos. Thank you so much to my first Patreon supporter, Vicky, and I'm looking forward to more of you joining the party. So until then, we'll see you next time at Desktop Inventions.